life kind of taking a turn at a mm. young age. Uh-huh. Uh, your parents' life, yeah, um, taking a turn once being up and now, yeah, having to kind of adjust because of their career. Really have to adjust. And your 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 household is kind of you know going through it, and now you're kind of taking a different path. Uh-huh. The year that 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 you have this encounter, uh-huh. uh, or you can. Narrowed down to the week uh-huh. leading up to your this great encounter. You know, you riding down the highway. Kind of walk me up to that point. Okay. Wow. Uh, it's, 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 and now I know it was all God. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I'm still, one thing we was, you know, we always went everywhere with mama. If mama in the bed, all the kids laying in the bed. If my mama going to the store, Everybody at the store. So I was always like, right now, I still, you know, call my mama, talk to her, we'll stay on the phone for a long It's You know, it's never uh, uh, where you feel like you just uncomfortable talking. Never a dull moment. Yeah. So uh, coming up to that moment, that happened like a couple of years. A couple years of space was in between before that last moment of my life changed. So I can I can narrow it down from that time. That first experience was when I woke up, uh, woke up getting ready to. No, I made it to work. This was the first experience. I was doing installation, and I was ins- installate, and I was in this house, and the house was. Uh, it was still dark outside, and just out the blue, all the people said they had to leave and go somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like they just dropped me off, and I was there. And I'm, you know, got a cigarette in my mouth, and I'm stapling. I didn't start working, you know what I'm saying? Because I think it was a Friday, and it was payday, so it was on. I hadn't, I, I wasn't even hiding nothing, you know. And all of a sudden, I hear this voice say, "Throw those cigarettes away, or you're gonna die." I said, what in the world? I'm looking around. I said, nah, I'm crazy. I said, you need to stay off this dope. You get high too much. <laughs> you need to stop uh, smoking and snorting powder. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, nah, that's just something I heard. So I went back, and it got louder. I said, I told you to throw them cigarettes away. Are you going to die? I said, oh, man. At the same time why I said, oh, man, and made a turn, a window was right there. And it was sitting, it was dark outside. Through that window, a light, so bright. Man, I never felt this glory like this. It hit my face and went from the top all the way to the bottom of my feet like you would never imagine. And all of a sudden, it left. And I, threw this, I ran outside. I remember going, running outside, stumping the cigarette out, taking the cigarettes out of my pocket and throwing them in the trash. And I called my mama, and I had a razor phone then. That's when razor phones was in. Yeah, everybody had that. I had a razor phone, because mm-hmm. I had a little TV on there. Mm-hmm. That when the game, you can watch a couple channels on on phone. I, told, I said, mama, I said, a voice just spoke to me and told me to throw these cigarettes away. I'm like, she was like, that's God, Terrence. That's, God is doing something to you, working on you. Say, I say, I'm saved, mama, I'm saved. You know, because I, mm-hmm. I ain't know what else to do. I, I heard the audible voice. I didn't hear the audible voice. Like, I didn't heard it. Next encounter, to speed it up, I woke up and on my way to work again. So that morning, I just wake up and a song, Smoking Norfolk, it still touched my heart to this day. I need you now. Lord, I need you now. Need you right away. Right away. And I was coming up Canal Road in Gulfport, and I just couldn't stop crying. And I was just crying and just crying. I got ready to get on the interstate. And once I got ready to come around and get on that interstate, and I got on the interstates, the heavens, not with spiritual eyes, not somebody telling me, with the eyes I'm looking at you right now, the heavens open up and fire 
started shooting down on me. And I was, just remember crying so uncontrolled. I was like, I can't take it. Please stop. What is this? I can't take it. And I remember this voice speaking again. It said, pull over to the side of the road until I'm finished. And I'm still crying. I get off the interstate. I come around, pull in the open parking lot sit in the open parking lot and I just remember crying out and screaming and just crying Lord and just remember this presence just over me just overtook me overshadowed me just man I, I never forget that and the voice said okay you can leave I'm finished now now I remember going to work on Three Rivers Road pulling in the storage place where we used to park at and I sat there and I remember, like, I had this book because then, I, you know, I was reading books. It was a book called Heaven, a little white book. And I remember just sitting there looking at this book and remember going through this experience like, man, did I just hear this? And again, I get on the phone, call mama. Mama, the heavens just opened up fire. She said, Tan, God was filling you with the Holy Ghost. God is changing, filling you with the with the Holy Ghost. So I'm like, filling me with the Holy Ghost. Cause after that, like a month later, I think I tried to stay saved nine months. I never forget. <laughs> That's what I tried to stay saved nine months. And I remember uh getting into it with my wife. And I remember going to the casino. And I said, you know what, man? I said, it's so boring. I told myself, I'm finna just go to the casino and, and just play. Because back then, you know, they would tell you you could still do certain stuff and you still. And I got in the casino, I remember drinking red wine and had like 10 glasses. <laughs> <laughs> red wine. Before I knew it, I was at the store Wait. buying a pack of cigarettes and I was back. Mm -hmm. Snarko came back. But to speed that up, a couple years later, coming from Moss Point with a couple ounces of cocaine, and i never forget it because we had just left somebody's house, coming up I-10, getting ready to come in, coming through Biloxi, coming into Gulfport on the interstate. And i never forget looking over to the passenger side seat, and I seen a legion of demons and see, people don't understand what, not in the spirit, not with these two eyes, not, not, people don't understand what they look, legion, if you understand what legion is, really? it was demons, they so, like Paul said, it's unlawful to even be uttered. And people that know me know, I ain't finna play with this, I ain't finna lie to you about this. That's why so many people gravitate to them because they know I'm a miracle. Legion of Demons was demons coming out of demons, out of demons, out of demons. It was so, if if he let you see it with your natural eye and you ain't with it, he ain't with you to let you see it, and he had, didn't ordain it, God, if he don't ordain you to see it, you will lose your mind forever. Mm -hmm. Seeing a legion of demons, quick as I can, you just blink your eyes, drinking, cocaine, women, uh, cussing uh, up seven days at a time. All that just left. And the person that I called, I never forget this. He dead and gone now. My cousin, Big Mook. I called him. I said, Mook, man. I said, man, what's up? I said, man, I just seen a legion of demons on the patch. He said, T, man, this came out of my cousin's mouth. We still in the streets. We still. He said, T, he says, time for, for you to quit. Man. He says, it's over. Man. He says, time for you to give your life to God. Mm. This is what my cousin told. Like, God took his mouth and he said, like, that ain't some big mook say. Like, T, it's time for you to quit. It's time for you to get saved. This this the last day for you. You can't do it no more. Like, it's the, he said, it's the last day for you. And that was the last day. And then God turned around and gave me a dream exactly how he died. Wow. I told him, I called him, I said, I see you in the hotel room. 
and I see you laying on the floor, and I see you OD. Are you overdose? I said, I, I seen, I seen this. I went down there and looked for him. Went to my auntie to my house. They told him he was just over here. And I finally found him at my grandma's house, bagged in. And I told him the to dream. And I remember him, God said, tell him the dream and leave. And I remember him standing at the back of the car. I just remember telling him, walking to the car and crying like I never see him again. I remember it. I just, man, I remember that. This is like a, my brother. Like, this ain't no, like, we grew up from baby. This ain't no cut. Like, we together every day. Like, I may say, go tell him. And then don't say nothing else, leave. And he was standing behind the car screaming, T, T. And I remember his hands being up in the rear view mirror. But I remember God saying, that's the last time you will see him. Damn. Damn. Like, man, that was the most, man, that was the most hurtful thing. I had to preach in Slidell on the Sunday. First time I ever had to preach in Slidell. That morning when they called me. And said, my cousin Trey called and said, he dead. He gone. I said, who gone? He said, Big Moo, he gone. And God, I wanted to cry so bad. But God didn't let me cry. When he sat in my prayer room, wanting to cry, wanting to grieve, he wouldn't let me grieve. He had already gave you yep. that peace yep. in telling you what you got to do. Yep. And I can see throughout God leading you up is like he he didn't do it like all at no. one. He just peeled the layers back yeah. piece by piece. Yeah. Peel one layer back. You know, you're still struggling. Yeah. Leading up, peel another back. You're getting a little bit closer. Yeah. Until this final time, it's just it was all God at yeah. that point. Yeah. And so a lot of people think they got a misconception of how God saves. Yeah. You know, they think, you know, you know, I come kind of in a similar way you come up. You yes, know, sir. you got to get on the altar call on Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> you know, but still, yeah. you know, you get out the altar calling on Jesus. You rapping Jeezy. Oh, I you would get off the altar and have cocaine in the car. Exactly. And have cigarettes. And I'd be like, oh, Father, I know you're going to forgive me when I smoke this cigarette. <laughs> no, this actually, uh, I would be across the street because you had to park cars, to just walk right across the street and park your cars because there'd be so many cars in the church parking lot. Mm -hmm. And I'd be fine up a cigarette saying, God, I know you're going to forgive me, but you know I need this cigarette. Uh, and because, you know, I'm like, man, I ain't, you know, God just, he, he understand that I need these cigarettes. Wow. Uh, like, it was, man, it was just. It just, and that just was a process that God took you through. Yeah. And just for those that are watching, you know, expecting God to do it this type of way, just you watching Brother Terrence today shows you the mercy of God. Yeah. You know, it shows you, uh, the Bible said the mercy of God leadeth yeah. to repentance. And just watching how just God just certain instances like already had your life mapped out yeah. and allow you to go through those things just to see what death looks like face yeah. to face so that you have that like you said those supernatural encounters the average person wouldn't be able to bear it in their natural mind no nope. and so he had to allow you to look death face to face for you to know that to take away that fear yeah to take the to put a boldness on yeah. the inside of you because, you know, I remember you. I remember you saying that you didn't know what a prophet was. Yeah. But all this time, God is taking you through experience, training you. Yeah. Developing you. Yeah. Molding you to be the prophet that you are today. And so, you going through that supernatural encounter.